Good morning. Welcome to Morning Prayer for Wednesday, 4th of January 2023. This service is part of the online prayer ministry of Christ Church Cathedral, Newcastle. And I'm the Dean of Newcastle, Catherine Bowyer, and today is my mum's birthday. Happy birthday, mum. The Deanery and Christchurch Cathedral stand on the unceded sovereign lands of the Awabakal and Waramai peoples, and St Peter's Hamilton stands on the land of the Awabakal peoples, which is also unceded. I pay my respects to Elders past and present and pray that I, with the Cathedral and St Peter's communities, that we may learn from and listen to the Elders, that we may repent of sins of past and present, and that in reconciliation, working towards reconciliation, we may care for all the good gifts that God has entrusted to us in creation. Wednesday morning prayer is on page 401 of the prayer book. Our Psalms this morning are Psalms 11 and 12, and our reading from John's Gospel, chapter 4. And as has been my practice in this time, these days of Christmas, I'll be reading in our prayer time a reflection by Sam Portaro from his book Day Springs Meditations for the Weekdays of Advent, Lent and Easter. Wednesday morning prayer on page 401. In the name of the Holy and Blessed Trinity revealed to us as the Creator, the Redeemer and the Sanctifier of the world. Amen. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks. For well, this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Our opening canticle, a song of God's grace. Blessed are you, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for you have blessed us in Christ Jesus with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. You chose us to be yours in Christ before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and blameless before you. In love you destined us to be your children, through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of your will, to the praise of your glorious grace, which you freely bestowed on us in the beloved. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalms 11 and 12 on page 232. Psalm 11. In the Lord I have found my refuge. How then can you say to me, Flee like a bird to the mountains. Look how the wicked make ready the bow, and notch their arrows upon the string, to shoot from the darkness at the true of heart. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy place. The Lord is enthroned in heaven. His eyes search out. His glance tries the children of Adam. He tries the righteous and the wicked, and those that delight in violence his soul abhors. He will rain down coals of fire and brimstone upon the wicked. A scorching wind shall be their cup to drink. For the Lord is righteous and loves righteous acts. The upright shall see his face. Psalm 12 Help, Lord, for there is not one godly person left. The faithful have vanished from among the children of Adam. Everyone tells lies to their neighbour. They flatter with their lips, but speak from a double heart. If only the Lord would cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaks so proudly. They say, by our tongues we shall prevail. Our lips are our servants. Who is Lord over us? Because of the oppression of the poor, because of the groaning of the needy, I will arise, says the Lord, 
and set them in safety from those that snarl after them. The words of the Lord are pure, as silver refined in a crucible, as gold that is seven times purified in the fire. You will surely guard us, O Lord, and shield us forever from this evil generation. Though the ungodly strut on every side, though the vilest lorded over the children of Adam. We consecrate this day to your service, O Lord. May all our thoughts, words and actions be well pleasing to you and serve the good of our brothers and sisters through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from John's Gospel, chapter 4, beginning at the first verse. Now when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard Jesus is making and baptising more disciples than John, although it was not Jesus himself but his disciples who baptised, he left Judea and started back to Galilee. But he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water, gushing up to eternal life. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. Our canticle, Te Deum Laudamus. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, the cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all praise, the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you took our flesh to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory, we believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, you have shed upon us the light of your incarnate word. May this light kindled in our hearts shine forth in our lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
This is Sam Portaro's reflection for the 4th of January. Sam Portaro's reflections are based on the readings for the Eucharist each day, and this reflection draws on John chapter 1, verses 35 to 42. The two disciples fell into step behind Jesus and followed, curious to see what was behind the crazy hermit baptizer's fantastic proposition that this man was the chosen one, the Lamb of God. They had not gone far when Jesus stopped suddenly, whirled on his heel, and asked them outright, What are you looking for? Whatever it was they sought, whatever it is we seek, we tend to be looking in the wrong place, oriented in the wrong direction. It is an understandable and forgivable mistake. After all, as we approach Epiphany, we are naturally oriented toward the heavens, searching for that gleaming star that guided those original oriental sages to the cradle with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. But as we ponder the world around us and the task of our mission itself, we are once again confronted with his question, what are you looking for? And once again, we are uncertain of what or how to answer. Could it be that our uncertainty and hesitation reveal not so much our ignorance as our profound disorientation, that we are looking up when we should be looking down? That we are looking out when we ought to be looking in. We tend toward insecurity, toward a suspicion of our own gifts and the grace of God revealed within us. This insecurity turns our eyes and minds outward, leads us to look always beyond ourselves, nearly f never fully appreciating that what we seek may already be ours in our possession. In short, if the season of Christmas is the season of Emmanuel, God with us, then why do we not celebrate this presence? Why do we instead look for some elusive star to guide the way out of our dark insecurity when the very light of God has come to dwell with us, in us? I cannot pretend to have any easy or clever answer to that question. I can only confess that I come to this insight from my own experience. I know that it is very hard to accept that I, in myself, am called to be a God-bearer. Maybe I am hung up on performance anxiety, afraid that I am not good enough, a poor example, an insufficient instrument to the task. I know that such insecurities as these have driven and continue to drive me, sometimes beyond reason and health, to work harder, but not always better. I fear that in the end, such overcompensation only obscures whatever God might reveal in me, were I more relaxed, more centred, less anxious. What gospel do we convey when we are always overtired, when we are so consumed in the doing, that the very quality of our being suffers. This anxiety is marvellously and humorously treated in Rebecca Wells's novel, Divine Secrets of the Yaya Sisterhood. Siddeley Walker searches her mother's life for evidence of the grace she seeks for herself. Her mother, Vivi Abbott Walker, writes wisely, Good God, child, what do you mean, you don't know how to love. Do you think any of us know how to love? Do you think anybody would ever do anything if they waited until they knew how to love? Do you think that babies would ever get made or meals cooked or crops planted or books written or what goddamn have you? Do you think people would even get out of bed in the morning if they waited until they knew how to love? You have had too much therapy or not enough. God knows how to love, kiddo. The rest of us are only good actors. Forget love, try good manners. Our mission is hardly an expansive or an expensive one. 
It is to allow the God who longs to be revealed to the world to be revealed to that world in us, to live lives of transparency, unafraid to let God be seen in us, through us. That does not mean our lives will be perfect or even good, any more than the lives of our ancestors in faith were perfect or good. Moses the murderer, David the philanderer, who begat the loved child Solomon, Paul the persecutor, the list is an endless catalogue of human frailty. Through the likes of these, God was revealed, continues to be revealed. For Sidney Walker, the moment of epiphany comes when she is able to see and say, my mother is not the holy lady. My mother's love is not perfect. My mother's love is good enough. My lover's love is good enough. Maybe I am good enough. This is gospel, truly good news and the beginning of wisdom. To accept that our love is not perfect, but it is sufficient. And God can and will do the rest. Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your Spirit that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day in love to one another and to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant us to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus that we may with one voice glorify our God and Father.